They constitute a small but dynamic part of the population of Cyprus, numbering in total some three and a half thousand. They form a minority, albeit one with a strong and centuries-old presence on the island. They are Cypriots, with their roots reaching far back in time. They are the Armenian community of Cyprus. centuries-old course through history. Its land extends between the Black and the Caspian Seas in the southern Caucasus. In the Armenian language, the land is called Haik, a name which became Hayastan following the addition of the Persian suffix stan, meaning land or country. The original name itself derives from Haik, a great-grandson of Noah and the legendary patriarch of the Armenians. Noah himself had, as mentioned, made landfall in the ark on Mount Ararat, situated in that part of Armenia today under the control of Turkey. Mount Ararat, with its impressive peak at an elevation of 5,137 meters above sea level, currently Turkey's highest mountain, continues to form a symbol to Armenians the world over, as well as a constant reminder of the place from which they were violently ousted. The mountain itself also forms a particularly favorite subject for Armenian artists. Armenian history dates back to at least the 9th century BC, when, in the area around Lake Van, the kingdom of Uratru was established, only to be overrun in 585 BC by the Medes. The region was subsequently subjugated by the Persians, with one Armenian revolt after another against the then rulers, all ending in failure. When Alexander the Great dissolved the Persian state, Armenia formed part of his empire, and Greek domination over the area continued with the Diadochi. Then, in 190 BC, Armenia came under Roman sway and was divided into two kingdoms. These, however, were soon reunited into one under King Dikran the Great. The country became a Roman province in 114 AD. In 387 AD, part of Armenia came under Persian rule and part under the Byzantines. In 645 AD, the country was conquered by the Arabs, while from the 9th to the 11th century, it enjoyed a period of independence. In 1071, it was conquered by the Seljuk Turks, at which time a large section of the population emigrated to Cilicia, where, in 1080, the kingdom of Little Armenia was established north-northeast of Cyprus. This kingdom was dissolved in 1375 by the Mameluk Turks, while the original Armenian state also came under new conquerors, the Mongols and the Ottoman Turks. In 1829, Russia wrested from Turkey a large expanse of Armenian territory, which later became the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, 
the state of Armenia once again became an independent republic, albeit with a large part of its territory still within the borders and under the control of Turkey. Armenia was one of the first countries to accept Christianity and in 301 this became the country's official religion, making Armenia the first Christian state in the world. Through the centuries many significant monasteries thrived there. It experienced periods of exceptional greatness as well as many and ongoing tragedies. It was mainly because of these tragedies and forced exoduses that Armenian communities were established in various countries of the world where the diaspora flourished. It was in this way also that the Armenian community in Cyprus was formed many centuries ago, which, after the Greek, is the second oldest community on the island. This because the presence of Armenians in Cyprus is first documented in the latter half of the 6th century, while that of the Maronites is attested to more than a century later, that of the Latins six centuries later, and that of the Turks some 1,000 years after the Armenians. Specifically, in the history of Cyprus, the Armenians first appear in 578 AD, the Maronites in 686, the Latins in 1126, and the Turks in 1570. The first documented arrival of Armenians in Cyprus dates back to the early Byzantine period and specifically to the reign of Justin II. The prominent military general Maurice, also known as Cappadocian because of his place of origin, later one of the most important Byzantine emperors, made a name for himself mostly for his victories against the Persians during a transitional and critical period for the empire. As attested to in various sources during a campaign against Persian King Khosrau or Khosrois I, Maurice took captive in Greater Armenia's Arzanen region a total, according to Theophylact Simokata, of 10,090 Armenian prisoners. Of these, one-third, some 3,350, were, on a royal edict, transported to Cyprus where they were relocated in villages and towns. Why this relocation to Cyprus? Primarily for military reasons. It's known that from within the ranks of such settlers, determined warriors were recruited, but also capable workers of the land. Because the Armenians were, at the time, known for their military skills, it's considered most likely that their relocation to Cyprus was aimed primarily at bolstering the defences of the island. Such relocations were not a rare occurrence within the Byzantine Empire, part of which at the time was, of course, Cyprus. Maurice had, during the same period, also relocated a number of Armenian families to Thrace. The supposition that the Armenians relocated to Cyprus were primarily soldiers is strengthened by the fact that they were sent to various areas of the island. It would appear that Armenian settlers arrived in Cyprus in the 7th and 8th centuries as well, and also the 10th, mainly for political as well as for commercial reasons. As their numbers increased, the local Armenian diocese was also founded in 973 AD. 
The second documented mass transport and relocation of Armenians to Cyprus took place between 1136 and 1138, during the reign of Byzantine Emperor John II Komnenos, and, more specifically, within the scope of a military campaign against Little Armenia. On his orders, the entire Armenian population of the Cilician town of Tel Hamdun was relocated to the island. Nothing is known as to the reasons which deemed this relocation necessary, nor about the number of settlers and their social status. It's considered highly probable, however, that these new Armenian settlers were also related to the military profession, given that the Byzantine army drew inter alia on the Armenian population. This supposition is strengthened by a reference that, in the army of Cyprus's Duke Isaac Comnenus, which came up against Richard the Lionheart of England during the latter's invasion of the island in May 1191, a number of Armenians also served. Isaac's Armenian warriors appear to have been sent as reinforcements in 1185, after the Duke's wedding to the daughter of Armenian Prince Taurus II. Settlements in Cyprus attested to as Armenians, such as the villages of Platani, Kornokipos, Spatharikó, Patriki and Armenochori, appear to have been initially related to the establishment on the island of Armenian military detachments. Supporting this view is the fact that such settlements are strewn throughout the island and at strategically significant locations. The village of Platani, above Lifconigo, controlled a narrow pass leading from the northern shore to the Mesauria plain. The choice of its strategic location was not at all accidental. It could be that the name of the village indicates a settlement of the area by Armenians from Asia Minor's Platanion, located near the town of Seleucia, opposite Cyprus. The village of Musere in the Paphos district has kept the surname of a large and well-known Armenian family which flourished particularly during the 9th century. One member of this family, Byzantine military general Alexius Musere the Armenian, had also served as Archon or provincial governor of Cyprus between 868 and 874. Armenochori, situated northeast of Limassol and once again at a strategic location, appears to have been founded as the headquarters of a force tasked with surveying and protecting the nearby coast, as well as for controlling passage to and from Limassol itself. Patriki, also at a strategic location, controlled not only a large stretch of coast, but also the entry to the Karpas Peninsula. This settlement was most probably founded by patrician Nikitas Halkutsis in 965. Its inhabitants, however, were Greeks and not Armenians, possibly farmers and livestock producers providing logistical support to a military unit overseeing the surrounding area. Spatharikó, yet again at a strategic location near Famagusta Bay and on the road towards the Karpas Peninsula, must have been founded by a Byzantine military officer bearing the rank of Spatharios or Protospatharios, possibly Protospatharios Leon Simvaticus, who served as governor of Cyprus in the early 10th century. During the Frankish rule of Cyprus, the village was inhabited exclusively by Armenians. The village of Kornokipos on the southern slopes of the Bendadactylos mountain range could, as a garrison post, survey a large expanse of the Mesauria plain and control passage to and from the capital, Nicosia. It's not known when exactly this settlement was established, but the village is one of those which were gradually Islamized. The Byzantine period of Cyprus came to an end with the conquest of the island by Richard the Lionheart of England during the Third Crusade in 1191. The very next year saw it being bought by Frankish noble Guy de Lusignan, who had recently lost his throne as King of Jerusalem. 
The purchase marked the onset of the Frankish rule of Cyprus, with the island, as a result, being proclaimed an independent kingdom. During this period, from 1192 to 1489, as well as during the subsequent and brief period of Venetian rule, 1489 to 1570, the Armenian community of Cyprus not only maintained, but also strengthened its presence on the island, especially as of 1210, when a marriage brought the kingdoms of Cyprus and Little Armenia even closer. It was then that King Leo II of Little Armenia married Sibylla, stepsister of Cyprus's King Hugh I. At the time, the eastern Mediterranean was plagued by constant tensions arising from frequent wars, crusades, an upsurge of piracy, and a huge increase in commercial activity backed by large interests and against the backdrop of long-standing conflicts. In this climate, good relations and a close cooperation between the kingdoms of Cyprus and Armenia was of great significance, and in the interest of both. Hence, another marriage came to strengthen this cooperation when, in 1238, Cyprus's King Henry I, whose first wife had died in Kyrenia during a siege of the town, wed Stephanie of Lampron, sister of Armenia's King Hetum I. There followed more marriages between members of the two royal families. In 1306, Amalric deposed his brother, King Henry II, whom he later sent as prisoner to Armenia. There, the Cypriot king was held for six months until he managed to return to the island following the assassination of his brother and usurper of the throne. The matter caused tension between Cyprus and Armenia, so much that the Pope deemed it necessary to intervene. Armenia was also the recipient of military assistance from Cyprus in 1307, upon being faced with invading forces. Another invasion befell Armenia in 1320-21, when Egyptian forces attacked, at which time Cyprus once again provided assistance. Included were four Cypriot galleys, on which many Armenian families were transported safely to the island. These recently arrived refugees settled mostly in Nicosia and Kyrenia, with a significant number enlisting in the then Cypriot army. Armenian refugees also settled then as well as in 1346 in Famagusta too. The small, extant Armenian church of the Virgin Mary, situated in the within-the-walls part of Famagusta, built in the 14th century, is referenced to have been erected by Armenian refugees who had settled there. In Nicosia, the Armenians were to be found mainly in the western part of the town, from the area around Paphos Gate to Sarai Square. This area used to be known as Armenogitonia, or Armenian neighborhood, while the their gate, which formed part of the older, no longer in existence walls, was also known as Armenian. Further west, in the present-day area of Ayos the Medios, there used to be a large farm referenced in relevant sources as Armenian Vineyard. There also used to be two Armenian churches in Nicosia, which, however, do not exist today. One was dedicated to St. George, and the other to the Apostles Peter and Paul. Medieval Famagusta also boasted two other Armenian churches, which, once again, are no longer in existence, those of St. Sergius and St. Barbara. Nicosia and Famagusta both had Armenian bishops. Of these two sees, that of Famagusta was the shortest lived. Armenian churches also stood in the villages of Spathariko, Kornokipos, Platani, and elsewhere. Armenian military personnel, however, also served in other areas of Cyprus as members of the Cyprus Kingdom's forces. For example, an Armenian garrison is referenced as having been based in the region of Xeros in 1373, when Cyprus was invaded by the Genoese. As also referenced, Armenians served in the Cypriot force which faced the Saracen invasion in 1425 
and that of the Mamelukes the following year. It was during this time, around 1425, that the Armenian Church received possession of the Monastery of St. Makarios on the Pentadactylos Range. The monastery had been founded circa 1000 AD and was dedicated to St. Makarios the Hermit, a 4th century ascetic who, according to tradition, had lived in the area. The monastery at a privileged and beautiful location in 1974 came under Turkish occupation, was looted and subsequently left to the elements, while in 1997 it was also greatly ravaged by fire. To the Armenians this holy place was rendered inaccessible by the Turkish invasion and occupation of the northern part of Cyprus. However, since May 2007, and following an initiative by the representative of the Armenian community, Vartkes Maktesyan, the occupation forces allowed group visits and the holding of prayers at the now dilapidated monastery. Every year, on the first Sunday of May, Armenians organize a mass pilgrimage to the monastery. The Kingdom of Little Armenia was conquered by the Muslims and disbanded in 1375, while prior to that, and specifically from 1342, its last four kings also formed the Armenian branch of the Lusinian dynasty, which arose from marriages with members of the royal Lusinian family of Cyprus. The last king of Little Armenia, Leo VI Lusinian, died in Paris in November 1393. He had been a king without a kingdom, and since he died without an heir, his title was conveyed to his cousin, the then King of Cyprus, James I. This development led to all those who since then and until the end of the Kingdom of Cyprus sat on the island's throne to bear the title not only of King or Queen of Cyprus, but also of Jerusalem and Armenia. During the brief period of Venetian rule, 1489-1570, it seems that the Armenians, like the Greek Cypriots, no longer served in the military. The Venetians' suspicious outlook of the island's inhabitants did not lead to feelings of trust in the granting to them of the right to bear arms. In any case, the then regime was so cruel and inhuman that the Cypriots even asked the Ottoman Sultan to invade and occupy the island. Under the circumstances, their only hope was a new master who would prove less inhuman. When, in the summer of 1570, the Ottoman Turks finally invaded Cyprus, the Armenians, particularly those of Nicosia, viewed the development in a positive light. On the contrary, the few Armenians still living in Famagusta took part, along with the town's entire population, in the heroic resistance to the Ottoman siege which lasted almost a year. And when, in August 1571, the town's residents had no choice but to surrender, many, including Armenians, were butchered. The new rulers, the Ottoman Turks, banished all non-Muslim residents from the within-the-walls Famagusta, leading the Greeks of the city to found the new outside-the-walls town. That was also when the Armenian Diocese of Famagusta was abolished, since the domicile of non-Muslims inside the walled city was strictly forbidden. 
In addition, and as a preemptive measure, the Turks also banished all the Latins from Cyprus in its entirety, so as not to have adversaries on the domestic front should Venice or any other European power attempt to retake the island. In Nicosia, the Armenians were initially smiled upon by the new masters, with a firman or edict issued by Sultan Selim II in May 1571, granting them possession of the medieval Latin convent of Notre Dame de Tir. This significant monastery, occupying a large plot of land at the western rim of the within the walls town, acted as the very heart and soul of the Armenian community of Cyprus for the next four centuries. Until that is the intercommunal strife of 1963-64, the Turkish Cypriots' withdrawal from government, and their resulting establishment in the area of an enclave, thus rendering the place inaccessible. However, following decades of desolation and abandonment, and once again thanks to the initiative and efforts of the representative of the Armenian community Vartkes Magdesian, as well as those of the Armenian ethnarchy. October 2009 saw the commencement of restoration and reconstruction work funded by the UNDP. The Armenians of Nicosia had been living until then in the city precinct surrounding the monastery, a neighborhood which extended up to Paphos Gate. It's furthermore referenced that the Armenians had also, for a short time, been assigned control of the gate itself. During the first years of the Ottoman rule, it's estimated that some 20,000 Armenians were living in Cyprus. However, this number soon dropped dramatically, with many fleeing the island after the new rulers, like the Venetians before them, also proved particularly cruel and inhuman. The Armenian monastery on the Pendadaktilos mountain range continued to function, with a firman issued by the Sultan in 1642, also exempting it from any and all taxes. This exemption was renewed in 1660 and again in 1701. The monastery was an important station for Armenians on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, but also a retreat for Armenian hierarchs and other priests from Cilicia and elsewhere. As, for example, Abbot Mehitar of Sebastia, who visited the monastery in 1695. The common folk of Cyprus, however, continued to experience the harshly tyrannical and oppressive regime, and its unbearable, constant, and arbitrary taxes and persecutions. The oppression was such that many were compelled to convert, if only for appearances' sake, to Islam. And profess to be Muslims while secretly continuing to adhere to the Christian faith. It was in this way that the so-called linovamvagi, a word deriving from the Greek words for linen and cotton, and indicating their dual allegiance, came to be. In their majority, these were Greeks of Cyprus, even though Armenians, Latins, and Maronites also joined their ranks. It's referenced that Armenian Linovamvaki lived in a number of villages such as Armenochori, Ayos Hariton, Spatariko, Platani, Artemi, Ayos Yakovos, and others. The Armenians were also persecuted during the widespread massacres and lootings carried out by the Turks in Cyprus in 1821, during the many reprisals against civilians following the start of the Greek Revolution. The overall situation was somewhat improved towards the end of the Ottoman rule of Cyprus, particularly because of the Tanzimat reforms, which the Ottoman Empire was obliged to introduce throughout its domain under pressure from Europe's Christian powers. It was then that a small number of Armenians from Constantinople and elsewhere settled in Cyprus, bolstering the up till then relatively small community. A number of Armenians were merchants and traders. Both they and the other inhabitants of the island, in the same line of work, started seeing better days given the new conditions, particularly after the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869.
The overall situation in Cyprus began improving during the British rule, 1878 to 1960. The new conditions also helped the small Armenian community gradually improve its social standing. Known for their knowledge of languages, a number of Armenians from Constantinople, Smyrna and Cilicia moved to Cyprus to work in the British administration and consulates. The number of Armenians in Cyprus increased significantly after the mass deportations and massacres perpetrated by the Ottomans between 1894 and 1896 and later in 1909. These persecutions culminated in the 1915 to 1923 enormous tragedy to which the Armenians living in Cilicia and other parts of Turkey were subjected. A shocking and historically attested to event which, to a certain degree, affected Cyprus as well. This grand and imposing monument sits atop a hill overlooking the Armenian capital of Yerevan and is known as Zizernakapert, or the Swallow's Fortress. It's a monument dedicated to the Armenian genocide carried out by the Turks between 1915 and 1923. One and a half million people were slaughtered by the Turks during that time, while many others managed to flee and end up in various parts of the world. This, another monument dedicated to the Armenian Genocide, overlooks the Lebanese capital of Beirut, where many Armenians sought refuge, and where the Catholicos, or Patriarch of Cilicia, the religious leader of the Armenians of Cyprus as well, has his see. The sea itself contains a mausoleum situated next to the church, a small plain building beneath which lay buried the bones of 300 children out of the 1,200 or so orphans who fled there after their parents perished in Turkey. Not all the children survived the ordeal. The mausoleum was constructed through the donation of Armenian Cypriot Vahram Utijian in 1938. Both extent and brutality massacres and persecutions on the part of the Turks succeeded in nearly decimating the Armenian populace of the then Turkish domain in what was a precursor to that which was about to happen to the Greek populace as well. Those Armenians who managed to save themselves fled through various routes. Many succeeded in reaching Armenia itself, where in some instances they founded new settlements. Others fled with every means possible to Syria, Lebanon, Greece, Egypt and Cyprus. Cyprus, not far from the shores of Cilicia, received some 10,000 refugees, most of whom later left for other lands, even though a few, some 1,500, remained, bolstering the Armenian community of Cyprus. The huge tragedy of the Armenian Genocide constitutes a very painful memory and recollection. In Beirut's Antilias, the location since then of the Sea of the Catholicus of Cilicia, a number of monuments to this tragic event exist, including a museum housing valuable relics, icons, manuscripts and other artifacts of historical significance, all of which were salvaged on pain of suffering and sacrifice by Armenian refugees fleeing Cilicia.
In Cyprus, the Armenian community succeeded under the new and more favorable circumstances to make headway towards a better life. This small but dynamic and progressive community of Cyprus would, from then on, thrive in various fields. It succeeded in producing from its ranks significant men and women of the arts, who rose to fame primarily in the field of music, and who, in some instances, were also groundbreakers on the island itself, as, for example, world-renowned musician Vahan Bedelian. Members of the Armenian community of Cyprus also led the way in the field of photography. They succeeded in establishing their own educational institutions, associations and choirs. They built new churches, established themselves as men and women of the arts, letters and sciences. They proved successful entrepreneurs, merchants and craftsmen. Some also worked in mines recently reopened, such as those of Skuryotisa, Mavrovuni and Amiandos. In Nicosia, 1921 saw the founding of the Melikian School and 1938 that of the Uzunian School. The Chapel of St. Paul was built in 1892 and that of the Resurrection in 1938 while the Armenian Club was founded in 1902, the AGBU in 1913, and the major cultural and sports association AIMA in 1934. The local AGBU, which was established in 1913 in Nicosia and is a chapter of the worldwide Armenian General Benevolent Union, acquired cell-phoned premises in 1989 near the Mokonian Institute with the inauguration held by the late president of AGBU Central, Alek Manukian. The Armenian Young Men's Association, known in Cyprus as AIMA, was established in 1934 and acquired its own premises on state-owned land ceded for this purpose in Stravolos with the inauguration held by the late president Spiros Kipriano on the 30th of May 1987. In Larnaca, the Church of St. Stephen was built in 1909, while the same year saw the founding of the Musegian School, which was rebuilt in 1923. Also in Larnaca, 1912 saw the founding of the Ver AGBU, and 1931 that of the Ver Armenian Club. Similarly, in Limassol, the Armenian school began operation in 1928, even though it wasn't until 1951 that it acquired its own building. The Church of St. George was built in 1939, while the Limassol chapter of the AGBU was established in 1936. In Famagusta, the Armenian school was founded in 1927, while the Church of the Virgin Mary of Ganchvor was reconsecrated in 1945 and the Vare chapter of the AGBU was founded in 1949. In the cities mentioned above, there also operated between 1944 and 1948 the highly active Friends of Armenia Association, known as Paregamats. In the past, the Melkonian and Narek schools, as well as the Aima Club, hosted Armenian Boy Scout systems. Of particular significance was the overall contribution of the Melkonian Educational Institute in Nicosia. It was built by tobacco merchant brothers Grigor and Karapet Melkonian between 1924 and 1926, with the initial purpose of housing 500 children orphaned as a result of the genocide. Known as the Armenian Orphanage, 1934 saw it beginning operation as a secondary education boarding school, and it was not long before it became known far and wide with students not only from Cyprus but also from another 30 and more countries. By the time of its uncalled for closure in 2005, this educational institution could boast 1,828 graduates from all over the world.
With the establishment of the Republic of Cyprus in 1960, the members of the small Armenian community, which at the time numbered 3,628 people and had forged strong bonds with the other Cypriots, were granted rights equal to those enjoyed by each and every Cypriot citizen. As with the other small communities of Cyprus, Maronites and Latins, the Armenian community enjoys all the rights extended to Cypriot citizens and elects its own representative to the island's parliament. However, the Turkish Cypriot mutiny of 1963-64 had its adverse effects on the Armenians as well, and primarily those living within the old, walled sector of Nicosia, who once again had to abandon their homes and become refugees. Furthermore, the Turkish invasion in the summer of 1974 brought about the greatest Cypriot tragedy in recent history, with its consequences experienced by the entire population of the island, including the Armenians, and especially those living in Famagusta, Kyrenia, and the old, within-the-walls sector of Nicosia. With the help of the Republic of Cyprus, the Armenian community succeeded in recouping its losses. The new Nareg school was built in Nicosia in 1971-72. The new church of the Virgin Mary, or Sorp Astvatsatsin, was built between 1976 and 1981. The new Prelature building was built in 1983-84, while 1990-91 saw the erection of the new Genocide Memorial. Towards the end of 1989, the Armenian Ethnarchy of Cyprus commissioned the well-known architect and painter John Geverian with the designing of a marble monument in remembrance of the Armenian Genocide, with this subsequently being placed in the courtyard of the Church of the Virgin Mary. Its three arches symbolize Armenia and the Armenian diaspora, both within and without the then USSR. The black granite cross is the work of sculptor Levon Tokmagian. The memorial was officially inaugurated on April 24, 1991, while April 1996 saw the interment within the monument of remains of martyrs brought to Cyprus from the Syrian desert by the Armenian Relief Society. More remains are kept in the two marble ossuaries built in 2000 in front of the monument by the Egoyan and Tembekijian families. The Larnaca seafront features the genocide monument since it was there that thousands of Armenian refugees first set foot in Cyprus. It was realized through the financial contribution of the Republic of Cyprus, with the foundation stone being laid on November 24, 2006, by Armenian President Robert Kosharian, and the unveiling held on May 28, 2008, by Cypriot President Dimitris Christofias. In the years that followed the 1974 tragedy, the Armenian community succeeded, not without great effort, in continuing to develop and progress. Today it boasts its own educational institutions, cradles of learning in which, among others, the Armenian language, history and tradition are cultivated and nurtured. Yermen gelen duysiye gir, mes hayastan. Oski martun, 
The Kalajian Rest Home for the Elderly, managed by the Kalajian Foundation, was inaugurated on March 6, 1988, by the then Minister of Interior, Christodoulos Vinyamin, in the presence of Catholicos or Patriarch Karekin II. Since 1995, every month sees the circulation of the Arsakank, or Echo newspaper, and since 2003, that of the also monthly Azad Tsaim, Free Voice. In addition, and since 1997, the Armenian prelature of Cyprus, following the initiative of Archbishop Varujan Hergelian, has been publishing the Kegart, or Spear, monthly ecclesiastical bulletin. Since 1953, the Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation has been broadcasting a daily Armenian language program. In 1999, the largest circulating English language newsletter, Gibrahayer, Armenians of Cyprus, first appeared on the Internet, with its publication continuing to this day, while the Armenian community of Cyprus's official website, cyprusarmenians.com, was launched in 2007. The Armenian community of Cyprus furthermore has its own churches in which all religious duties are performed freely. Ecclesiastically, the community comes under the Catholicos or Patriarch of Cilicia, who, following the genocide, has his see in Beirut's Antilias. It was there that we met with Aram I, an important spiritual personage. Today, we are proud that the Armenian community of Cyprus is an integral part of the society, the nation, and the country of Cyprus. Cyprus has and always had an important place in the history of our people. I don't believe that you can find an Armenian in this globe who doesn't have a firm, a close attachment, love, dedication, passion in respect to Cyprus. Cyprus is a symbol of beauty, of peace with justice, of love, of the beauty of God's creation. Cyprus is a symbol of uh, cohabitation between cultures and people, and civilizations, and churches. This is how we came to recognize Cyprus 
and the Armenians of Cyprus have always brought, and I believe will continue to bring, an active and committed participation in all aspects and at all levels of the society of Cyprus in the progress, development of these beautiful islands. I'm sure that all members of our community are fulfilling their obligations faithfully and obediently in respect to Cyprus and the cause of Cyprus. The cause of Cyprus is a cause of justice. And as such, we Armenians do know what does it mean to struggle for justice, for human rights, for reconciliation. And as such, not only the Armenians of Cyprus, but the Armenians all over the world have always expressed concretely their solidarity in respect to the cause of Cyprus. Cyprus will continue for the Armenians to be a symbol of peace, love, beauty, and justice. The Armenians of Cyprus constitute a small but close-knit and progressive community. Through various artistic, cultural and other events organized by them, through their religious feasts and gatherings, through education, they maintain continuance and solidarity. Through the years, they've always enjoyed excellent relations and ongoing cooperation with the Greek-speaking majority of Cyprus. They are Cypriot citizens, and following the accession of Cyprus to the European Union in 2004, also citizens of today's United Europe.